Hey there, welcome to another Tableau video. I'm going to show you a few of the quick table calculations that I use mostly. I don't know all of them. I just use the ones that I kind of use the most, right? So a quick table calculation is, it's kind of, it's a preset calculation that in, like if you have to do it in Excel, like a moving average or a running total, it's like something you have to program in, you have to write it in. Uh, if you're using pivot table, if you've used pivot tables, you know that there is some inbuilt running totals in there. It's not as sophisticated as what Tableau can do. So let's go do a few examples. So I've got the superstore here and I'm going to bring years over here. Okay, we'll just do year and then I want to do category. Okay, so just like a, a cross tab like so, and I just want to bring sales in. All right, so pretty simple. What we might actually do is add, I might actually add sales like so. Okay, because this will show you a little bit better of a view. Let's get rid of that. Okay, and this is just the sum, right? So if I, if I change this to a bar, all this means is for furniture in 2015, that's how much they made in the first quarter. That, that, that's all it means. They're just individual kind of think of them by themselves, right? If I right click on this sums value and I go quick table calculation, here they are here. These are already inbuilt for you. So you don't have to do anything. So if I want a running total, I can add that in. Now what you'll notice is they're all going up, right? A running total can't go backwards unless you had like a minus, like, you know, if this is profit and you had a negative, that's the only time it will go down. Okay, in which case it will look more like a waterfall chart. Uh, I'm going to add in the values here. Okay, and as you can see, values are going up. But let's say I wanted it to go up going this way, not going this way, right? Or I wanted it to go this way, then back, then this way, then back, then this way, right? So there's a lot of different patterns you can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to... I'm just going to change the formatting to be thousands. Uh, currency, I think my dog's about to start barking. Uh, thousands, there we go. And it's just to kind of show the value. And the other thing, I'm going to put it in color just so we can see the ascending uh, metric. Okay, so should I just keep it one color? I'm feeling very orange today for some reason. Okay, right, so it goes like that. Now, if I go and right click this, I go edit. It gives me all these different options. So first of all, it tells me it's a running total using sum. Okay, across means it's going to calculate across this way. Table down means it goes this way. Now, because uh, if you don't know the difference between table and pane, this is the table. Okay, get my drawing tool out again. These are the panes. Okay, and then cell which you'll see over here, it refers to the individual items, okay? So that actually took me a little while to understand. But let's say I do table across. What you'll also notice is these numbers. One, two, three. And what that actually tells you is the position of how the calculation is actually flowing, which is freaking awesome because you can see that these, by just reading up 1 through 13, are independent of these ones. 1 through 13, 1 through 13. So we know those calculations are being performed independently. If I go down, right, and I don't click there, right, get my drawing tool out, you notice it goes 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 3, 3, 3, which tells me it goes like this. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, right? So whoever thought of this, if, if you're listening or if you're watching and you, you were the one at Tableau that did this, uh, I really want to buy you lunch or massage your feet or something. Well, it depends how good your feet is and how expensive the restaurant is. Across then down does this. Goes this way. Then this 554, right, gets added to this starting one. So you can see this is 13, this is 14, and it goes like this, that way, and then back that way. So what happens is you can see by the time you get through all three categories, furniture, office supplies, technology, you're at whatever value this is, million or whatever, thousands, right? So again, another way to represent your data. You can do down then across. Again, it goes this way, right? So just follow the numbers. That's all you have to do. Back then, um, like if I was to do this in Excel or something, especially if it was quite intricate, I'm like, is it 
going this way? It, it was so hard to see, and just the whole having the numbers there makes such a difference. All right, so now if we do pain, right, it's going to do them independently. So you can see the highest number that you, you can see is like 4, because it's doing it only within this space here. It's not going out of the pain, right? So you can go pain down, right? In this case, there's no sub pain, right? That's why they're all one. So let me show you why that is. If I just expand category, okay, and then let's get rid of this, okay? Let's change this to text, okay? Let's get, make this, right? And let's get rid of that. Um, I've lost my quick table. Here we go. Uh, that's not the best way to show it. But basically, if I go edit table calculation over here, right, you can still do the same thing. So if I go pane across, pane down, it does it this way. Pane across, then down, so it does that entire grouping, right, down, then across. So that's going to go down, then across, down, then across, down, then across, right? So again, it all depends on what you're trying to get your data to do, right? So that's running sum and all the kind of different variations. The other one I like to use is moving average, which I love, right? Because, and it's so easy to do here and modify. So let me bring that in. I'm going to do a continuous line and then I'm going to do sales again, okay? And I don't want it to be exact date. I want it to be like maybe, no, maybe not days, maybe weeks. All right, cool. So I do want it granular. I, I don't want it too granular for this example. Now, here's how it works. When you have a line like this, it's difficult to say how it's going. You can probably say, okay, it's going this way, right? Oh, accidentally hit my mic. You could say it's going that way, but it's, it's still not a good indicator because this is over like a three-year period, right? So in my, in my daily life, we have um, like a, a call center team and I manage a lot of their data. And I want to see either by individual advisor or during a time period, how did we actually go? And the data actually looks quite similar to this. So it's hard for me to actually say, uh, we had a low day, we have a high day, I don't know. So this is where the moving average comes in. So I'm going to do it in two ways. The first is just show you the moving average. First is, you got to have make sure you have a measure here. You go quick table and you go moving average. Okay. As you can see, the lines actually change because it's taking previous values, getting the average, previous values, and it's doing it all across the line. So if I go edit, right, I go back to this menu, and I want to do it every three days, so previous values, four, five, six, and it, it's basically a smoothing, I guess you can call it smoothing functions. Signal processors or <laughs> engineers aren't going to like me using that, right? But the more you do it, the more smoothing you'll see. Now, in this case, it's difficult to actually see what's happening if you're not familiar with moving average. So I'm going to show you something else. Let's clear this. Okay, we're back to our original. I'm going to duplicate this sales. So you just hold control on your keyboard and you'll notice that plus symbol comes up, right? And I'm going to make two exactly the same ones, right? And I'm only going to do moving average on one of them and then I'm going to overlay using dual axis. So if I come to this one and I go quick table, moving average, Okay, and I'm going to say, I'm going to go edit table, and I'm going to make it five days. Okay, so it's like a, or even seven days, so a weekly period. Okay, like so. I'm going to right click on this one and go dual access, right? And that's going to overlay them, and they made it the same color, which I don't like. I don't know why it's done that. But let's get rid of that one. Oh, actually, no, let's leave that in there. Let's double click this, and I'm going to change the moving average to red. And this one to blue, or maybe even uh, like black or something, or dark. There we go. Right. So you can now see the red over the the black one. So the black is the actual results. The red is the moving average. And to see your red line better, what you can do is if you click on this sum of sales, or you can click over here, go to color and set the opacity back a little bit, so you can still see it, but the red shines a lot more. So that's a lot better. Now, one other thing. Uh, that you should remember when using dual axis is the axis on this side is not always the same scale, right? So this 20,000 doesn't match up to 20,000 here. So what you have to do is you have to synchronize the axis. Click here, right? And now what do you see? All right, I'm going to get my drawing tool. It's actually smoothed out all these bumps. 
to have a much smoother line. And the more you smooth it out, so the more averaging period that you do, the smoother the line gets. Okay, there you go, until it eventually just becomes a flat line, right? So this actually tells me a lot more in terms of data because if I get my red drawing tool out, I can kind of see that there's peaks and troughs now. I can see there's that period there, that period there, that period there. So in terms of my team or in terms of who's doing the most or who's doing a little bit or over a long period of time, I can actually say this was a pretty good year, right? There was a few bumps and I can actually start looking into the bumps. What happened here? What happened here? What happened here, right? And see that this is kind of our regular performance, right? Minus the anomalies or, you know, the the unusual things that aren't part of regular business days, okay? So again, you can do a whole list of table calculations on moving average, right? I won't get into all of them um, because I don't use all of them. Current value, so in the moving average, that just means use the value on that day as well for the calculation. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go through the rest of them. I'm just going to go through those two. So I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, 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 subscribe.